Hi everyone. Today we're going to look at another one of my D&D or role-playing game type books, and that is Dungeon Crawl Classics. I'll try and adjust this so we can get the whole thing in frame. It's a big book. All right. Dungeon Crawl Classics. So it is a reimagining of Dungeons and Dragons if Gary Gygax was uh, recreating the game today. So it tries to get back to the source material, the uh, those books that inspired the original D&D. So Jack Vance, um, Appendix, and all of those sorts of things. It goes back to the kind of crazy, uh, very lethal, gonzo uh, type style that d and started out with and tries to make it as awesome as possible. I'll give you some examples. Uh, one of the first things to point out is the amazing art and the presentation. It's a giant, fat, hardback book um, full of amazing art that's very evocative of d and origins. Look at this. There is so much care put into what this book looks like. Lots of classic TSR artists worked on uh, the illustrations as well. It has a manifesto that you have to agree with before you can start playing. So it is a uh, old school style, but it's fairly easy to play. It has ascending armor class. It has a, a D20 rolls. Um, for attacks. A lot of the same basic stuff. It has a great um, summary here of what is similar and what is different to how you've played before. right? So you can immediately look at this and see, oh, I can see what's different. I know what I'm in for. Just summarizes it right there at the beginning, which is great. Characters. It uses funky dice. So it uses D3s, 4s, 5s, 6s, 7s, 8s, 10s, 12s, 14s, 16s, 20s, 24s, and 30s. So if you want to play this as written, you're going to need to get um, some of those unusual dice, which a lot of RPG players don't have. So that's one downside to it, I suppose. This game assumes that uh, you're going to be dying a lot. You start as a very low-level character, a level 0 peasant, essentially, and you're put through a funnel which means that you make a whole bunch of them, you send them into a dungeon with all your friends, and most of them die horribly. But anyone who manages to make it out the other side graduates to level one. There are tons of random tables in this for generating the kind of person you are. Create a random occupation for your level zero character. And you start off with um, some random item and a random weapon. Level advancement is interesting. You get points for surviving dangerous situations. That's it. If you survive, you get experience points. One through four experience points. Then it has this very simple chart here explaining how you get, uh, how you level up. Keeps it as simple as possible so you don't have to um, do a lot of math. The classes are all very distinct and extremely flavorful. You have your um, standard four classes, cleric, fighter, magic user, um, and a thief. Lots of different gods to choose from. Again, amazing art. You got your thief, and you got your uh, thief skills, um, which again works on a D20 system. But then there's uh, lots of different options. If you have lawful, chaotic, or neutral thieves, they all have different charts. You got your warriors. Your warriors are fun because they uh, roll amazing criticals. I'll show you the critical hit table later, which is um, hilarious. They do a lot of mighty deeds. They cut things down like butter. I swear this book is worth it just for the art alone. Wizard. This book is most famous for its wizard. A huge section of this book is purely spells. And uh, I'll take give you a look at that later. The spells are... Um, very detailed, and they create random effects. You roll on each spell to see if it casts or not, and if you forget it. So it's not just a uh, you know fire and forget system like most D and D games. It's a spell rolling system, and you, the roll that you roll when you cast the spell determines what it does. So spells are wild and crazy, and you know feel more magical. Or at least that's the idea. And you got some. Um, races as classes. Dwarf, which is basically kind of fighter, 
That's a great piece of art. You got your elf, which is basically a type of fighter slash wizard. And you got your halfling. Um, goes for equipment. Combat. Uh, nothing is too surprising in terms of how the game plays. If you play D&D, you'd pick it up pretty quickly. Although the stats are a little bit different. You have a luck score. Um, and the... Let's see. I think wisdom and intelligence were merged. Into just personality. Charisma was merged with one of them to just personality. No, I forget. Let's see if it's up here on the front. Yeah. Anyway, there's a luck score as well. Which is used to modify uh, critical hit rolls. You got a fumble table for what's going to happen when you roll badly. And you got these great critical hit tables. So the critical hit tables depend on who you are. Level zero characters and wizards don't get great crits. Thieves and elves get slightly better ones. Clerics, halflings, level one to two warriors, and one to three dwarves get this. And then eventually the really good ones are reserved just for uh, the best fighters and dwarves. So for example, um, foe entangled by your weapon, and takes negative six to AC, make another attack. Really great ones are foe decapitated with a single strike. You are death incarnate. Continue to make attacks against any foes within 10 feet until you miss. So you just become a whirlwind of death. Um, they all have hilarious descriptions for what happens. So rolling a crit is always fun. You don't just add, you know, add another die or double your dice. You have to read in a, a description and something fun will happen that will change the battle narratively. Fighters get lots of mighty deeds of arms. There are rules for uh, spell duels. Which is great. Every book should have rules for spell duels. Mercurial magic. So the section on magic in general is where the really core of the book is and what Dungeon Crawl Classics is most famous for. So like I said, it's a spell um, casting system where you have to roll to cast your spells. You can burn attributes to power your spells even further, which is very flavorful. Mercurial magic. So whenever you learn a new spell, you roll on this table, and there's an additional effect that will always go along with casting that spell. Sometimes good and sometimes bad. So the spell becomes really loud, or rats will pour out of your sleeves whenever you cast it, um, or you get fine control over it, or what have you. So something fun will always go along with every spell. So every wizard will feel completely different from every other one. Rules for corruption. If you roll badly enough, it'll start mut mutating you on your spells. There are misfires that will turn your friends' heads into chickens. And the uh, clerics get uh, deity disapproval. So if you disprove your deity, if you uh, displease your deity, uh, then bad stuff will happen. They'll require you to make sacrifices. All right, wizard spells. So here's a list of wizard spells. And they all look like this. I'll give you a go down to a higher level one. Look at an example. Um, levitate, invisibility. They're mostly they're similar to D and D spells. They're usually pretty straightforward. It's their the variety of effects that make them interesting. Scare, scorching ray. So scorching ray, for example. Um, so here's the result of your roll. If you roll really low, uh, if you get a one lost, the spell is lost, it's a failure, and worse, then you can misfire or the, it might have corruption. Um, just a bit higher, you get lost in failure. Um, if you roll 12 or 13, the spell fails, but it's not lost, you can still cast it again. And otherwise, it'll work and you can cast it again, with varying effects depending on how high you're able to roll. So for example, it'll do 1d8 plus caster level damage, and a target must make a Reflex save or catch fire, blah, blah, blah. If it's at really high levels, then the caster summons a jet of magma and flame from the Earth's core, which explodes upward from his feet, then blasts out at his enemies. Right? It does huge amounts of damage and covers everything in magma. Right? Everything catches on fire. And all the spells are like that. Some of them are extremely detailed, right? Shatter, look at these descriptions. 
It's a lot of information, but it makes all the spells extremely flavorful, flavorful and uh, dangerous, right? You never know what's going to happen when you cast them. Etc. Etc. Lots of spells. Spells, 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 spells. Spells, spells, still more spells. Keep going, still more spells. All right, all the way to here. Some other features include um, magical beings who can give you powers, right? Like the king of elf land, for example. An elf king who will basically grant you powers, or you can find you know, the fates, for example. A uh, variety in making monsters, types of encounters, critical hit tables for monsters, right? Undead get their own crit tables, uh, giants, dragons, everything gets their own crit tables. So this is a game that believes in um, the beauty of random events and random powers and random effects. Um, it adds the game spice. Strange things will happen, things are unpredictable, you're going to have to react to situations that you never dreamt could happen. It makes the game weirder and, for people who enjoy this game, more entertaining. So it's not for everyone, but it's a great game that, even if you're never going to play it, like, I'm not sure if I'm ever going to actually play this game, but the spell effects and the random tables are useful in almost any game, right? You can steal all the crit tables directly and just use them in your normal games. Etc. There's so much of this that you can just use without adopting the whole system. It comes with an adventure at the end um, that you can run. Actually, several adventures um, as a sample. It's almost worth buying just for the art alone, actually. You don't see uh, old school art like this anymore. So there it is, that Dungeon Crawl Classics. Um, let me know if you've heard of any other good old-school role-playing games that do something similar, that try and uh, put a new spin, or maybe an old spin, on Dungeons & Dragons. And this really refreshes um, the game and role-playing for me. It takes something old and makes it new, and makes it usable in a way I didn't expect it to be. So let me know if you've heard of anything like this, or any great supplements to it, anything else that I should check out. I'd love to explore that stuff. Um, like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you later.